Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a This Is Not A Top 10 and it's going to be on the cinnamon note. So it's going to be a cinnamon spicy This Is Not A Top 10. And as you guys know, uh, these videos are a lot of work. Got to take a bunch of bottles out, put them back. I love doing them though. And uh, you know, I've hit many of my lists. When I first started this channel, I created like a master list of This Is Not A Top 10 videos that I wanted to do. And we've pretty much knocked most of them out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to start ranking them because remember, these are unranked. But I think it's a great way to talk about a lot of fragrances. It's something I love doing. It's, a, it's you know, for someone who is not into fragrances the way that, you know, some of our subscribers are. Uh, and, you know, if you don't think about it all the day, all day and research things and, and you know, have a watch list and a wish list and all this stuff. Um, this is a great way to spend an hour or an hour and a half, depending on how long the video is. This is going to be a long one, so I hope you got your seatbelt on. Uh, and learn about a bunch of things just thrown at you at once. I don't hold back. I don't discriminate. There's new stuff. There's vintage stuff. There's niche stuff. There's cheap stuff. There's all kind of stuff in this video. And that is what I think hopefully, hopefully makes this channel unique. You know, I'm not um, pushing a product on you. I don't care whether you buy this, this, or this, or nothing at all, or just enjoy watching. And um, I hope that the passion that I have for this kind of shines through on these videos. But first, let's do scent of the day. And scent of the day is, man, I'll tell you what. Um, if, you, if you've been following my channel and you've been watching, you know that I did an unboxing from a gentleman named Armando. And he sent me some stuff way more than I expected. He said, hey... I really appreciate your channel. I want to send you some stuff. And he sent me this. And I wore it to bed a couple times. And now I've made it my scent of the day. And I really like it. Actually, everything. I've tried almost everything that he sent me. Even the aftershaves. And they are. He must have been watching my channel very closely and taking notes. Because everything he sent me from the leathers to this, the incense, is just... I mean, it's it's right up my alley. He... um. He didn't strike out once, and this is called Bond Number no. Nine, Andy Warhol Silver Factory. Now, initially, the bottle looked like Andy Warhol's Campbell soup painting, with that half purple, half tealish. You know, it looked like the like the uh, Campbell soup painting that he did, and um, the license for the Andy Warhol fragrance expired, so they had to rename it. They renamed it Silver Bond. They did away with Andy Warhol's name altogether. Um, and then they just discontinued it. It came out in 2007. Aurelien Guichard is the perfumer. And what took me back with this is when you first spray it, you have no clue what it's going to be. It's like this citrusy, grapefruit, lavender thing. And you're like, okay, this is an interesting start, but it's very safe. And then within... Five or ten minutes, 15 minutes tops, the incense comes to the forefront and blends with this beautiful iris. It's resinous. Um, it's mysterious. It has this, some say metallic, probably because of the name, silver. Some say tar-like, you know, um, but I've really enjoyed wearing it today. I wore it to work. This is a very very artistic frankincense fragrance, which you can't always say with Bond Number no. Nines. And it's a shame this is discontinued, but what a pleasure getting to get to know this. So thank you again, Armando. Seriously, uh, you have not struck out once. Everything I've tried has been stunning. Uh, that product, Queer Ombre, is my favorite, though, of all of them you sent me so far. Ju I haven't tried your favorite leather. I'm saving the Spanish leather you sent me from Santa Maria Novella still, because I might wear that tomorrow. Uh, but yes, everything you've sent me has been a, a treat. Thank you. So let's talk about cinnamon. So everyone knows cinnamon. Everyone, if you're alive, you know cinnamon. Uh, it's spicy. It's sweet. It's warm. Uh, it can have this full-bodied, like, vanilla smell sometimes. Um, and in fragrances, it's used pretty common. And many of these have a cinnamon note attributed to them. Some of them do not. And I'm going off of my guesstimate that there is cinnamon involved. Okay, I'm going off of my nose and my brain. Um, but with the cooler weather starting to come upon us, these are going to be great fragrances to wear. Although, some of these have a fresher side, and you'd be surprised. But let's get started. 
So first I'm going to start with the decant. I have not talked about this on the channel yet because it is so just loud and sweet and but I do sort of kind of I mean I don't necessarily hate it let's put it that way it's red tobacco by Mancera some people despise this I don't it's kind of like the whole amber wood conversation we were having yesterday there are things that when people smell an amber wood molecule they run and that's not me I can I can appreciate it although sometimes when it's overdosed obviously it does get annoying but this is a huge fragrance gigantic and um, it has that cinnamon saffron in the top with oud and tobacco. So I'll, I'll talk about this. I know some of you guys might not appreciate me talking about a Mancera, but I'm going to talk about it one day. And then if you are making notes and you're putting asterisks next to the real cinnamon, you know, heavy or great representation or fantastic cinnamon notes, I'll tell you which ones to put an asterisk to, next to. This is one of them. Although I don't have a full bottle, it's Costume National Om. And you could have, this is the Parfum version from 2020, but the original from 2009 I think is also amazing. But I love this stuff. This is full bottle worthy. One of the best cinnamons I've smelled. Um, spicy, woody, and it's got this musky, resinous, sandalwoody, labdanum base. It's so good. So spicy. Cinnamon and cardamom are the two main spices here. And it is a banger. I mean, Dominique Ropion created it, and he knocked it out of the park. Um, that should have been Frederick Mall's new stuff instead of Uncut Gem. Okay, next, we're going to go to a fragrance that I actually did a review on the channel already. This was sent to me by Anuj. Thank you, Anuj. I know I told him I wanted to smell it, and uh, he sent this along. And that's one of the advantages. Again, I've said it before. It's one of the advantages of working with somebody who is trustworthy, someone like Anuja Enchante who has their own shop, who has access to these, and who sometimes sets aside special stuff for their better clients. This is Ebene de Balmain. This is also full bottle worthy. I would love a full bottle of this. If I had more disposable income to spend on fragrances, like I didn't spend enough, um, I would buy this. It is so good, though. I, I mean, I'm just lucky. I feel blessed that I even got a chance to smell it. But it's, uh, it starts off very green with this basil and artemisia. And then it dries into this cinnamon, patchouli, amber, labdanum, leather. Oh, it will remind you a little bit of um, another fragrance that's on the list. Tuscany um, Per Uomo. But Ebene de Balmain, I think, is a little fuller. Whereas Tuscany Per Uomo goes more into the anise citrus thing uh but they do remind me of one another in the dry down but they're both fantastic fragrances but ebony de balmain is a unicorn and um amazing spicy woody scent okay next we're gonna do a fragrance that i also have a video coming up very soon uh, i hope to talk about this very soon it's a jill sander which is a house that i just adore i would own everything they own say 1993 and before if i could this is jill sander background and we're getting towards the end, unfortunately, of the better Jill Sander fragrances. Their uh, first, say, 15 years of life as a house are were really stunning. This is what the bottle looked like. It's a little mini, again, that I got from Manouge. Um, and background has this... It has this raspberry note that Jill Sander used in a couple of their fragrances. They used it in Feeling Man. And they used it here. And this has carnation... Uh, Lily of the Valley Rose Cinnamon in the Heart with um, this uh, vanilla cedar woody benzoin dry down. It is, uh, it is sweet, but I really like the way Jill Sanders did sweet early on. You know, the touch of sweetness does not bother me. I really enjoyed it. So that's one that I will be doing a video on soon. And then, again, if you're making asterisks, put this one Right next to Costume National Ohm is one of the better cinnamons uh, that I've smelled. This is Dior's Mitza. And again, I don't have a full bottle. This is very expensive stuff, but I'm just blessed to have what I have. Uh, Mitza is a Francois de Machy. And this is a great representation of cinnamon. It's cinnamon with honey, spices, frankincense, labdanum to give it that ambery oriental feel with some patchouli. It's a very good perfume. And this is from 2010. This is from when Francois de Machy was 
you know, banging out on all cylinders. He was, um, he was really knocking him out of the park in 2010. Okay, next is going to be uh, Etienne Eigner fragrance, and this is called Silver. So Eigner is a house that does not get a lot of love in the frag cum, although I will continue to bang my chest for the stuff I've smelled from them. Even the new, some of the new stuff, like Explosive, Heinke sent me a bottle of that. It is amazing. Uh, and so uh, this is also an amazing scent, although Silver is a big-time unicorn. It's extremely hard to find any stock. It reminds me a little bit of Balenciaga's Portos, but I think this is maybe a little bit more... Um, not as bold, you know, it, it has a little, it has that cinnamon with spruce and spruce makes it a little bit more unique. Portos did not have spruce, but it does have this leather castorium dry down that will remind you of Portos. So it's challenging, but very wearable in my opinion, but I wear anything. I don't care. Okay. Next, we're going to go to the house of Kenitze 10 or Kenitze. This is Kenitze 10. And this is just a modern bottle. I'll tell you what, I would love to own a vintage of this because this fragrance, you know, when I first smelled it and wore it, I thought, you know what, this is like wearing something that belongs in a museum. Yeah, it's cool, but it's from 1925 and it's, you know, it's, it's, I have, I have it in the collection for reference because this is like a reference leather for people, right? Leathery, spicy, with the cinnamon in the heart, with rose and, and geranium and carnation. And they used to use this spicy carnation, you know, cinnamony, woody thing to create, I think, part of the dry down of a leather fragrance. Bellamy has woods in the um, uh, heart along with iris. Kenite 10 has woods in the heart along with iris. And then the more I wore it, the more I realized that, holy shit, this is not just a museum piece. This is absolutely stunning fragrance. I love the, even in the modern, I, I mean, the vintage must be mind-blowing. You know, it must just be orgasmic. It's got this uh, dirty, you know, I always envision the purple color when I, when I wear this. Like, purple leather comes to mind uh, because of the iris and um, the rosemary in the top makes it masculine, but there's some you know, citruses to balance everything out. It's just amazing. Uh, and then, Kenitze 10 Gold Edition came out in 2000. And, 2000. So, Kenitze 10 came out in 2000, uh, 1925. This came out in the year 2000 for the modern millennia. Um, and it's supposed to be a little bit more wearable. I love them both, honestly. This is even full bottle worthy to me, this gold Golden Edition. Uh, it also has a cinnamon heart um, and then we're going to go to Chanel's Egoist, and this is the modern bottle. I have a vintage bottle. I love them both, but I really like this. I mean, for a good reformulation, I think this is a good reformulation. I think they did a great job with Egoist. Uh, I don't think they did as good of a job with Antaeus, but how could you? I mean, Antaeus, the star is Castorium. You know, here it is, um... This rose woody mahogany with this beautiful rose that shines through and cinnamon and sandalwood, of course. Sandalwood is one of the stars of the show with some tobacco and vanilla. But even the modern stuff Chanel's pumping out is fantastic. Okay, next is an amouage and this is Jubilation 25. Wow. I mean, this is, this is a love for me. Um, how could it not be? It's... It's such a special fragrance to me. Um, it's it's one of the fragrances that really opened up the world of fragrance as an art form to me. I mean, I just, I love this stuff. Um, honey with frankincense, blackberry, labdanum, cinnamon, bay leaf. There's immortel, there's oud, there's a papanax, myrrh, cedar. There's everything I love in here. It's just a masterpiece. And I love wearing it. Absolutely love wearing it. And I do always feel like, you know, I feel like royalty wearing that scent. Okay, next we're going to go, say with the House of Amouage, this is CL Man. And this is discontinued. One of the few Amouages that have been discontinued. Look, I used more of CL Man than I have of Jubilation 25. How crazy is that? 
probably because this is so wearable in the heat. This is a great example of a of a um, floral, fresher fragrance that has this spicy, woody frankincense dry down that stays very wearable in the heat. And I think it's because that lavender maybe reminded people of being like maybe a little bit old school. You know, lavender reminds people of like Caron Poronom from the 30s, um, their grandfather's fragrance. You know, lavender, some people don't like lavender. I love lavender or I've, I've grown to really love lavender. Uh, and, you know, I think that's the reason why this never gets hype, but it deserves it. I think it's an amazing scent. I love wearing it in the warmer weather. Um, and don't be afraid of the florals in there, guys. I'm telling you, that is a stunner. Okay, if you have your pen out, this is the third fragrance I'm going to tell you to put an asterisk next to. Excuse me. You know, talking like this just... Uh, it just really dries your throat out. Okay, next. Uh, I'm going to tell you to put an asterisk next to this one. This is Fate Woman in the stunning bottle. I mean, look at that. It's like I'm holding an artifact, a relic. You know, look at that. It's just, I love Amouage's presentation. So classy and yet reserved. Not gaudy or flashy. And um, Fate Woman has this beautiful cinnamon oriental vibe going with a note of chili. And, you know, chili, it's used in two fragrances to perfection to my nose. This and Pure Chili, or what's called A Taste of Fragrance by Thierry Mugler's Amen Flanker series. Uh, a Taste of Fragrance, stunning chili note, stunning chili note here too, but... This is frankincense, vanilla, cinnamon, patchouli, benzoin, leather. Excuse me. It's Amouage's take on something like opium, I think. Uh, but the cinnamon in here is, I mean, it's, it's a stunner. And it's right there from the beginning. You'll get this peppery. Oh, it's so good. And do not let the fact that it's fate woman put you off. Do not. I'm telling you. Uh, this is a, in fact, Luca Turin gave it five stars. Me and him don't always agree, but on that we do. And then a later discovery that I made, thanks to people like Euro Rose, and there were a bunch of people banging the table that I have to try this fragrance. And you know what? I just trusted them. I blind bought it and I bought the 100 mil because Mudasir had it at a good price. And these vintages are very hard to find. This is Epic Woman. And Epic Woman is a revelation for me. I absolutely love this. In fact, I'm going to say something insane right now. And I might change my mind tomorrow. But as I'm smelling this right now, I think I like this more than Epic Man. Oh, it is so good. I mean, Epic... I don't, I don't know. How could I say that? You know, just slap me. But uh, it is so good. It's cumin, rose, cinnamon with this frankincense that Amouage does so well. See, the thing about Christopher Chong's era is that everything had this thread going through it. They were all Amouage. Even though they were all so different, it was an Amouage. It just felt, it felt right to me. It felt like it should have been like, you know, yes, that is an Amouage. Even if he did something out, out insane like Mitzman or, you know, something completely outrageous, Chrysanthemum and Ash, yep, that's an Amouage. And the new stuff, I just don't get that vibe. You know, I'm not going to buy Royal Tobacco, although I might buy Silver Oud. I really liked Opus 13, really liked it. I think that's the best thing that they've done since um, since that salmon guy, since the fish has taken over. Okay, next we're going to go to probably the last great amouage Christopher Chong put out. Kareen Vinshawn Spanner did this, and this is Overture Man. And look at that, curtains coming down. Beautiful presentation. I just love their presentation, and I love this fragrance. It's got cinnamon in the heart, but it opens up with this grapefruit and not a designer grapefruit, okay? This is beautiful. Perfect grapefruit perfected with cumin, cognac, nutmeg, resins like myrrh and mastic and labdanum, animalic notes in the base with leather. Oh man, smelling this really makes me want to wear this. I really have the urge to wear this right now. Frankincense, 
Clary say, oh, it's so good. Uh, and I bought this from Harrods when it first came out. I paid Harrods their crazy $50 shipping or whatever the hell they wanted because it, it was a Harrods exclusive for the first year. And uh, look, made in the UK. They stopped making it in the... They stopped doing any made in the UK uh, bottles. They brought all of the um, creation back to Oman. And I think the reason that they did that is the new guy, the salmon, the fish guy, he wanted to um, control the aftermarket. So sometimes you could find like Epic Man discounted for like 120 bucks, and he killed all that. He completely stopped it. They got a closer supply, grab on their supply, kind of like Chanel does. So they don't let bottles slip off. They don't sell them for cheaper. They don't let, you know, um, they don't have any slippage. And it uh, it 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 makes people pay the inf the full retail price, really, if they want an M wash, which makes the fact that I was able to collect these sometimes at better prices even more. It makes me even more happy that I have all my M washes because I, I love that. It's one of my favorite brands. But Overture Man is it's out of this world. Okay. My favorite uh, Antoine Lee, outside of, of course, Eugene's fragrance, which I rate separately because it's new. I haven't experienced it as much yet, although I absolutely love it and bought a full bottle. But I've said for a long time, this is my favorite Antoine Lee from 2000, creation from 2006. And this is Je Suis, Je Suis Un Homme. Uh, Je Suis Un Homme, which I think translates to I Am Man or something. Uh, oh, man. The reason I like this is this is absolutely 100% Antoine Lee's take on a niche version of Bellamy. And Bellamy is my favorite leather, by far. Uh, if you've watched my Top 100 Countdown, you know my taste by now. Bellamy is my favorite leather. This is Bellamy. This is Derby. This is, oh, it's just amazing. You know, it's 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 all the leathers that I love. And then he added this cognac and animalic note. And there's a cinnamon and clove. So there's a spicy heart. And you'll notice many leathers have this spicy, woody heart. Uh, the only thing this is missing is iris. It has the it has the cognac instead. Oh, it's so good, though. And I love this oily leather, man. It's so good. My favorite, Antoine Lee. Okay, next is going to be... The Afternoon of a Fawn. Same house. A tat libre d'orange. Uh, and so look at the juice color. It really is beautiful. And this is a beautiful fragrance. It's frankincense and rose. There's a lot of rose in here. With myrrh. It's resinous. There's iris. And there's a big note of immortelle. And there's cinnamon to support it all. So imagine the cinnamon spicy green. Because of there's a lot of oak moss in here. Um, floral. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on, and it's a really good Immortel. Top five Immortel scent for me. Okay, speaking of Immortel and cinnamon, probably one of my favorite Immortel scents. This is Sables, 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 Anikutal Sables. Um, and this came out in 85, so it's a vintage, this is a vintage bottle too. The new bottles, I think, don't say Anik Gutal anymore. They now just say Gutal. And um, this is... This is Immortel Cinnamon, Amber, Sandalwood, and Vanilla. So not the most complex creation, but a beautiful Immortel. Like, like if you highlighted all the best portions of Immortel, that dryness... You know, that little bit of cumin spice flowing through with the cinnamon. It's beautiful. And uh, masculine. She made this for her husband, I believe, in 85. So, fantastic fragrance. There's amaz there's, a, there's some amazing fragrances on this list. And then, and another another amazing fragrance is Ascada Por Homme. Now, Ascada Por Homme, man, I wish I had uh, the Eau de Parfum. I cannot find a bottle of the Eau de Parfum anywhere but it's so good. I mean, even this is so good. But my buddy, um, uh, Michael, Michael, who uh, I would love to have on the channel one day, he mentions that the Eau de Parfum is superior. He says it's uh, the better version of Escada Porom. I love this, personally, but 
Uh, I would I would love to own a bottle of the Eau de Parfum. This is Woody Oriental. It also has cognac like Overture Man with lavender, carnation, uh, caraway, cinnamon, nutmeg. There's lots of spices in here. Caraway, cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, bay leaf. Beautiful. Uh, and it dries down to something like, you know, YSL Jazz meets Heritage from Guerlain, but with cognac. And that cinnamon spiciness just sets it off. Look at the color of the juice. The bottle is classy. I mean, I love. They got the gem on top. Uh, I, I love this fragrance. I think it's a Scott is best. Okay, next we're going to go. Okay, so if you have your pen, right, you mark down your spicy fragrances. You put asterisks ne next to Mitza and Costume National Om and uh, Fate Woman. And this will be the fourth one I'm going to tell you to mark as really cinnamon, a great representation of cinnamon. But this is a shape shifter, so be careful. Lots of cinnamon and spice in the top, then it shifts. So the top will give you a beautiful representation of that cinnamon. This is Moth by Zoologist. Art in a bottle, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is lots of spices when you first smell with cumin. It'll challenge you a little bit, but you'll get that spicy cinnamon feel in the opening. And then it begins to turn more floral. The heart is jasmine, mimosa, heliotrope, lily of the valley, rose, stuff like that. And then it dries into this smoky, honey, you know, cypriol, guyac wood. You know, it's got that barbecue smoked wood feel with actual smoke, resins, and vetiver. And, it, and it's just an amazing creation. Shocked more people don't talk about that. It almost feels like it has a Guerlainade base in it too. Okay, so next we are going to go to that Aramis I mentioned earlier. This is Tuscany per Uomo. Now, Tuscany per Uomo um, is a nice lavender with citruses, and the citruses just last and last and last, it seems like. And then there's spices, caraway, tarragon, uh, um, cinnamon. The base is leather and patchouli and basil and oak moss. Lots of oak moss in here. <clears throat> this is a vintage bottle. This is what the vintage look like. Uh, and you can see the side says Tuscany. The new ones don't have this little touch. They also don't have the star on the bottom. Uh, and they don't have this little black ring right here if you want to e more easily identify the older bottles. But I love wearing that. That's in a, This... And CL, man, these two are two of my favorite fragrances that utilize a beautiful note of cinnamon that I wear in the heat. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of La Tizan Parfumeur. This is Mon Numero 10. Okay, so Mon Numero 10. What is it? Uh, well, first of all, it's a Bertrand du Chafour creation. And second of all, it is underrated. No one talks about this fragrance, shockingly. Um, it's 13 years old. It's not, the reason no one talks about it is because it's not complex. You're going to smell it and you're going to say, okay, I've smelled stuff like this before, but it's a Bertrand du Chafour. Remember, he doesn't just put out blah fragrances, right? And his fragrances sometimes get discontinued very quick because they're daring and they take chances. And so you look at something like this with frankincense, cedar, red pepper, and cinnamon, and you might say, you know, that doesn't sound too interesting. And when you first spray it on, you're going to say, you know, it doesn't smell that interesting. But then if you give it a chance and you wear it and you wear it and you wear it a couple times, you will notice that this fragrance um, has a lot going on in the background. So while you kind of see this... Um, you know, you see this sheen in the front, right? And your nose will focus on all of the stuff happening in the front the first couple wears. Wear three, four, five, six, you will notice some of the crazy stuff happening in the back. There's this smokiness that really arises from the frankincense. And it adds this mysterious quality to, to it. You're going to ask yourself, is there a Divana note? You know, is there a bay leaf note? is what other spices are in here. And there's so much going on, it feels like, outside of just this peppery, woody, you know, warm cinnamon frankincense fragrance. I think it's amazing, and I think it's highly underrated, in my opinion. 
Okay, next, uh, we're going to go to the House of Hermes, and this is a vintage bottle of Equipage. Now, Equipage is a fragrance that I really struggled with early on, okay? In fact, I almost sold it. And my theory or my stance of never selling fragrances saved me again. Because um, if I would have sold this, I really feel like I would have missed out on what Equipage is. And what it's trying to tell me. And I really feel like this fragrance is a fragrance that your nose has to become adjusted. Uh, it's not something that a modern nose can just wear and pick up, right? Um, and it has this very, I, you know, I like old school fragrances. I like vintage fragrances. You, if you follow my channel, you know that this is a vintage fragrance that at first, I really thought I didn't like because it smelled vintage, if that makes sense. It's, it's a weird thing to say, but it's the only way I can describe it to you. It has this vintage, um, this, this, uh, I was going to say this, um, I can't say old man because it doesn't feel old manish to me. Um, but it it it's so it's so out of the times of what's popular that it feels um you know it really feels like you're anytime you wear this you feel like you're wearing whatever is not in style today like styles change and they come back and they come back around but it feels like they never come back around to this if that if that makes sense it's so just 1970 and 1970 is what it is, and it's never going to come again, right? I know that sounds weird, but other styles kind of seem to come and go and they come back and come back in style. This, it feels like, is never coming back. That's the best way I can describe it. It really feels like you're wearing something of that particular time. But once the fragrance grew on me, I noticed the beauty in the spices in here. Uh, the spices with those with that pine... You know, it gives you that outdoorsy feel, the cinnamon in the heart, uh, the vetiver dry down. Uh, but that opening with the aldehydic, um, clary sage, rosewood, um, it's going to challenge you. You're going to, this is another one you're going to have to wear over and over again. But if you give it a chance, you will begin to really appreciate the spices. And I think if you buy the newer version of Equipage, just whatever they're selling with the, with the modern black cap that looks like this. I think it's a little easier to tolerate than this one. I think Jean-Claude Elena put some touches on the modern equipage, in my opinion, um, because whenever I smelled equipage uh, at a boutique, it smelled different from this. And I've never done it. I've never been able to do a side by side comparison. Um, but I was able to sniff equipage in its modern form, uh, and maybe because I was just away, displaced, and I couldn't do a comparison, but to me it smelled like maybe Jean-Claude Elena during his time at Hermes made some slight tweaks to keep equipage relevant, and he is sly enough and you know, knowledgeable enough where he could maybe, you know, get away with a, a reformulation, but to modernize it a bit. So this might be one of the most challenging bottles of equipage, actually. And I don't know, though, I would have to do a comparison, but I don't love the fragrance enough to go buy the modern stuff myself. So, uh, but that is equipage. Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of Philip Klein, and this is No Limits. Okay, so No Limits, if you like something like, um, what can I compare this to? This is like Gucci, um, this is like uh, Gucci Guilty Absolute meets L'Instant de Guerlain with Oud and Aquatic Notes. There's no other way to put it. That's, that's what it is. It's an insane fragrance. Aquatic in the top, Oud in the base, Gucci Guilty Absolute vibes with cardamom and cinnamon and clove and star anise and stuff like that. Lots of spices, pepper. Um, 
And the aquatic notes um, really make it very strange for the first 30 minutes. Once you get past 30 minutes or an hour, it settles, okay? But that blend of aquatic meets spices, meets oud and resins and dark chocolate, you know, that's why I said uh, Lan Santé Guerlain, that cacao um, feel. It reminds me a little bit of Pardon from Nasamato, Lan Santé Guerlain, that kind of thing. Uh, crazy, crazy fragrance. Okay, let's do some Guerlains. And I probably should have said earlier, this is nowhere near an all-encompassing list, okay? This is just some fragrances that use cinnamon, and there's still a lot that I set aside left to go. We're probably, you know, a little bit almost to the halfway mark. Uh, but this is Mouchoir de Monsieur from 1904. Uh, many fougeres will use this uh, cinnamon note to add balance. And here you get the lavender, you get the tonka, of course. And there's this patchouli cinnamon rose combo with iris and vanilla. And it's beautiful. I love this fragrance. I think I even enjoy wearing it just a slight bit more than Jiki, although I really like Jiki too, even though it's so old school. Jiki is another one that's kind of like equipage. It's like in its own time, there'll never be anything like it ever again. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so so that's Mouchoir de Monsieur. New Guerlain, okay? Now, if you want modern cinnamon, if you want modern cinnamon, you can check this one out. This is a good fragrance, I think. Came out two years ago. It's it's Lome Ideal Extreme. Now, this is the older bottle style. Guerlain changes bottle styles like I change shirts. I mean, they're all over the place. Uh, this is plum, cinnamon, tobacco, leather, heliotrope, almond, patchouli, cedar. And uh, I think it's a good fragrance. It's a little sweet. It's it's actually a lot sweet. But um, it is a good... It's probably the the... It's probably one of the strongest Ideal flankers they've done recently. And of course, they didn't offer it in the United States. It was only in Europe because LVMH is so smart. Uh, okay, next we're going to go to Santal Royale. Everyone's favorite Guerlain, right? Uh, this probably could have been on the, excuse me, synthetic list that I did yesterday. This is Neroli Jasmine Peach Rose Cinnamon Sandalwood Musk Leather Oud and um, it's got this norlimbanol oud thing going on that really bothers some people. I thought I was going to despise this because of what everyone said. I blind bought it uh, and I didn't hate it. Let's put it that way. It's not my favorite, but I didn't hate it, which is how I feel about many of these fragrances that some people, you know, really, really despise and hate. Uh, I don't hate that. The stuff that I hate, that I've said that I hate, like uh, Petty Shetty from Astrophil and Stella or Symphonium by Zerzhoff, you'll know if I really hate something. But stuff like Santal Royale, I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite. Okay, now this is one of my favorite tea fragrances, and this has a beautiful cinnamon note, and cinnamon plays a big role here. This is Gucci Porom 2. The Blue Juice. Man, this stuff is fire. Uh, it is spicy. It's got this freshness from violet leaf. Um, it's so masculine while being so posh. You know, it's discontinued, unfortunately. I love these old Gucci bottles. I wish you could feel how heavy this bottle is. I mean, this cap alone is... This is a heavy cap. Uh, and it's, uh, it feels good in the hand. Clicks into place. Beautiful bottle. Uh, this is pimento black tea, okay, with cinnamon, myrrh, olive wood, tobacco, and white musk. And I actually prefer wearing this in the heat, believe it or not. This is like a warmer weather fragrance for me. I know a lot of people like to wear that in the cold. I like to wear that in the heat. And the cinnamon sets off the tea and violet leaf beautifully. Okay, next is Giorgio for Men, one of my favorite honey fragrances. Uh, aldehydes with orris root, patchouli. It's basically honey, patchouli, cinnamon, sandalwood, benzoin, oak moss, honey, 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 lots of honey. Um, and I love that honey. I mean, just that, you know, you just take a, 
uh, jar of honey and just flip it over and how, you know, how that honey just slowly kind of drizzles out and accumulates. Um, that's what it feels like this fragrance wears like. It's, uh, it wears very similar to Givenchy Gentleman, which is also on the list, but that cinnamon in the heart plays a very important role. And then a newer acquisition, which also really took me by surprise how much I like this, and this was trust in Anuj because Anuj told me, Ramsey, this is a fantastic fragrance. You should probably get it. And I said, okay, that's it. You you, you spoke, I listened. Um, and he was right. Uh, this is Giorgio for Men VIP Special Reserves. This is a tester that he had. Wow, this is so good. It keeps that heart of Giorgio for Men but instead of going into the honey facet dry down, it goes into the late 80s, early 90s, you know, jazz, heritage, Escada Pour Homme, but more leather in the base of this. I really like the leather and oak moss. This is a, this is a VIP special reserve fragrance. It's a boss fragrance. I love it. Okay, let's go back to the designers again. How could you do a cinnamon fragrance video without Spice Bomb Extreme, the grenade? Everyone's favorite grenade. Cinnamon, tobacco, it's got that designer sweet vanilla saffron labdanum thing going. And you know what? I do like this fragrance begrudgingly. Um, I hate this stupid thing on there. But uh, it stops the bottle from spraying, so I keep it. Uh, otherwise, I just throw this away. Take the pin out and throw it away. But uh, it, is a, it, is a, it is a good fragrance. Not their best, but a good one. And one that has the same feel. Oh, and if you want to mark that one down for a lot of cinnamon, you 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 could. That could be one to mark. Um, another one that you could potentially mark, although it also is very sweet and you have to put up with the sweetness, is this. This is Parfum de Marly Herod. Now, Herod um, has a note I talked about yesterday on my synthetic video. It's called Pepperwood. Pepperwood has this woody, peppery profile, but that pepperwood opens with the cinnamon. So when you first spray, you're going to get hit with that pepperwood, cinnamon, and a whole bunch of sweetness. Vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. And the parts that I like, the tobacco, uh, are kind of hidden behind all that sweetness. But the tobacco note is very good in here. It's a fine tobacco. Uh, I really like the tobacco note in here, and uh, it has this cystus resinous labdanum note too. Uh, but the cinnamon's right when you first spray hair it. It's beautiful. Okay, next we're going to go to Dior. This is Dior Essence. Speaking of beautiful, this is a Guy Robert creation. What a fragrance this is. This uh, floral chiffre really took me by surprise. This is so intricate. Uh, this shares... Um, this and Shamad kind of dominate 1969 for me because there's this style. Again, in 69, this style. And I was, one, one video, you know, for whatever reason, I'm dumb. And it just kind of took a while to sink in. But I was smelling this, and then I was smelling Shamad, and then I was smelling this, and I was going, you know what? There are a lot of similarities. A lot. Um... And I went to go look everything up, and I said, wait a minute. Shamad was made in 1969, too. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's kind of one of those, like, duh. Um, but it, um, this, this, this DNA is fantastic. There's this beautiful ambergris note in the dry down. I think I prefer this to Shamad. I don't know why. It just clicked with me a little bit easier. Shamad feels even more layered. You know, if you if you look at the Shamad bottle, it has these rings and it just feels like if you like, you know, poured liquid over them, you took that honey from Giorgio Beverly Hills and poured it over the Shamad bottle with the rings, with the heart, the upside down heart. And, you know, the honey would have to kind of flow over those rings. That's what it feels like Shamad has these layers and layers that you have to get to. And this just felt a little bit more accessible, a little easier. Um, but I know eventually uh, I will crack the code of Shamad. But um, it's, a, it's a very complex fragrance to me, to my nose, for whatever reason. Um, 
but I really, really like this. And there's this cinnamon note that mixes with the florals, and then you get the resins and the oak moss. This is a masterpiece. I think this is Guy Robert's best creation, personally. Okay, so next we're going to go to the House of Diptyque, and this is Volutes EDT. Anytime you see a white sticker, it's an EDT. Anytime you see a black sticker, it's an EDP. And Volutes is Honey, Apopanax, Cinnamon, Iris, with tobacco-like vibes. Um, and beautiful Honey, Apopanax, Cinnamon, Iris. Honestly, this might be better in EDP. I don't know. I've never actually compared. I just know many times I preferred the EDTs, uh, so I, I bought the EDT. But uh, if you're going to wear that in the cold, maybe the EDP would be the better way to go there. All right, let's go designer again. This is Azara Wanted by Night. So we had the grenade, right? And now we have the barrel of the gun, the revolver. Um, they're so original. Uh, so Wanted by Night is cinnamon, orange, cedar, frankincense, cumin, tobacco, absolute, cypress, and cedar wood. It sounds better on paper than it really is in real life, to be honest with you. It has this generic sweetness that kind of bothers me. Um, I don't get much cumin. I'll tell you that. Um, but people love this stuff. Like, as far as, like, designer fragrances that sell, this is, like, one of the best sellers for Zaro. And then, speaking of best sellers for brands, this is uh, the house of By Killian, and this is called Angel's Share. Don't ask me why the hell I have this. Just don't ask. Um, it's this sweet gourmand fragrance that's kind of like everything I hate, you know, in a perfume. It's got praline and vanilla and hazelnut. I despise hazelnut. Um, it might be one of my most hated notes. And yet, if you wanted to smell a cinnamon-heavy, warm, cozy fragrance, I mean, you could put a check mark next to this, but you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to really endure sweetness. Very sweet. Maybe I'll force myself to wear this one day when it's super cold. Uh, or maybe I'll wear it when it's not and torture myself, but... Uh, I do need to wear that soon and talk about it. Okay, next is what I think is the best fragrance Victor and Rolf have ever done. And this is Antidote. So Antidote is this complex, extremely complex, citrusy, floral, spicy, uh, leathery, resinous, woody, Vanilla, it's everything. I mean, there's everything in this in this fragrance. And the catch line was that this is the antidote to boring men's fragrances. How's that for a tagline? The antidote. Um, the first couple times you wear it, you're not going to think it's good. You're not going to think it's unique. You're not going to think, you know, you're going to have to wear it and understand it and peel back the layers. It is very good. The cinnamon in here, when, when it shows itself, because it comes and goes, doesn't last forever. It's only a five-hour, six-hour fragrance. But um, when it does show itself, the spices are top-notch. One of the best cinnamon notes in here. Uh, but sometimes you're going to wear it, and you're going to get a lot of florals. Sometimes you're going to wear it, and you're going to get a lot of woods. Sometimes you wear it, you're going to get some resins. Sometimes you wear it, you're going to get a lot of citruses. Um, and then sometimes you wear it, you will get a lot of spices. So, uh, okay, get out your marker again, because this is one to mark, uh, as far as fantastic cinnamon fragrances to smell. This is Sundowner. Now, Sundowner smells like the, it smells like that red piece of the sunflower right there. It's warm, it's got tobacco, it's got cacao, sandalwood, but the cinnamon in here is top notch. The spices are top-notch. The ambergris that Andy Tower creates, his little accord of ambergris, uh, is top-notch. And, and I sampled that. Go watch my video on Sundown. There's a full video on it. I sampled it. I loved it so much, I bought a bottle. Okay, next is Yop Om. And again, if you're making asterisks, Yop Om is one to put an asterisk by. Uh, it is very sweet, but it has this spongy you know, mattress foam-like heliotrope note, 
with um, vanilla, patchouli, tonka, and this orange blossom in the top. That sounds crazy and out of place, but it really works with the white flowers in here. But um, yeah, the spicy cinnamon is very warm and very resinous. And then if you want a niche version of Yop Om, you could go for Santal, original Santal by the House of Creed. This is a vintage. Uh, this is a four ounce bottle, or two and a half ounce, sorry. This is a 75 mil, I think. Um, yeah, it's 75 mil. And you can see I do wear it. Uh, it's um, This is one that I am taking some privilege on because there is no sandal, uh, there is no cinnamon note listed, believe it or not. Uh, there's orange tree, absolute ginger, lemon, uh, lavender, peppermint, rosemary, pink pepper, Mysore sandalwood. Cedar, vanilla, benzoin, siam, ambergris, and musk. And so, um, since Pierre Bourdon claims credit for... Hmm, I just cut my finger. Since uh, Pierre Bourdon claims credit for um, for Yop Om, it is it does only make sense, since he was the ghost perfumer for Creed, that... Um, you know, our original Santal smells like Yop Om. If if the if the rumors are true, and it makes sense. I mean, a lot of what was said makes sense. And the guy that wrote that Ghost Perfumer book, he never had to recant his stories. You know, he never was sued. So, you know, read into that what you may. Okay, if you have your marker out, keep it out because we're getting to the cinnamon big guns. Put an asterisk next to witness. This is one of the best cinnamons I've ever smelled. Um, and it reminds me, it came out in 1992. It reminds me a little bit of early 90s cinnamon fragrances have this DNA. Okay, I don't know why, but they do. This has this green. It opens up very green with lots of mugwort. Okay, lots of artemisia, mugwort, orange, lemon. And then there's this spicy geranium that comes in, this rose, and this cinnamon. And the cinnamon really takes control of the fragrance. Uh, and it dries into this woody, resinous, patchouli thing. Great fragrance. Uh, discontinued, unfortunately. I do have a backup bottle. Anytime I back something up, it's worth getting your nose on. Okay, next is a new addition. And you'll hear me talk about this this winter. This is uh, Scents of Wood Plum in Cognac. And this was sent to me by Rachel, very kindly. Very kind of her to send me a full bottle. And the bottle's beautiful. She even picked the color combination I would have, that black. You can pick the combo of the cap. But this is another one. Um, if you like this resinous warmth, if you like the way that, you know, Herod has that real resinous warmth, or Spice Bomb Extreme, or Sundowner, or, you know, something that's coming up very soon, um, that I really don't want to tell you about because then it would ruin me telling you about it soon. Um, trying to think if there were some that we talked about before that are like this, but this kind of warm resinous Mitsa, you know, if you like something like the warmth of Mitsa, get your nose on Plum and Cognac. Uh, it's really good. Uh, the only thing is the first 30 minutes the first time I wore it, the first 30 minutes bothered me a little bit. There was something in it that seemed a little off. You know, I couldn't put my finger on it and describe it, but it seemed a little off. And then, after I kind of wore it to bed a couple times, I was gone, and I appreciated the fragrance. Um, but there, it's obviously, there's some synthetic notes in there, but it's very, very good. Very good. Okay, uh, next, we are going to go to the House of Aramis. And this is one where I just wore to bed for the very first time. This was one that Armando sent to me. And this is probably the least favorite of all the ones he sent to me. But I still kind of liked it. It's called um, Aramis Perfume Calligraphy. And there were a couple flankers of this. It was Calligraphy Rose and Calligraphy Saffron. I've never smelled either of those. But this is discontinued. It's uh, Estee Lauder, I think, marketed it. And Trudy Loren created this. And what's strange about this is there's this big, strange saffron blossom note that just kind of takes over the fragrance in the opening. And once that dies down, it turns into an interesting rose, myrrh, cinnamon fragrance, but ambery 
you know, Oriental style, Arabic style, if you will, with oud, with oud. Um, it's probably my least favorite that Armando sent me, but I did wear it to bed the other night, and I relatively, I could, I could see the appeal, but I also see why it was discontinued. Okay, now let's go to stuff that's more my style. This is going to be Aramis Devon, and this is beautiful, green, woody. If you like Alliage, if you like number 19, if you like the greenness of those fragrances, you have to smell Devon. Uh, galbanum, mugwort, lavender, carnation, old school carnation like we like, you know, uh, with the cinnamon stone pine needles. Uh, and it dries down to this leather labdanum with animalics in the base, patchouli, oak moss. Oh, so good. And actually, you guys will be surprised, but I like wearing this in summer. This is like a spring-summer fragrance for me. That greenness just really does it for me. Okay, now here's a winter fragrance, and um, you can put a check mark next to this one, or an asterisk if you will. The cinnamon in JHL is stunning. Pimento, there's this orange line that runs through the middle of the fragrance with clove, labdanum, vanilla, patchouli, sandalwood, rose. Oh. Okay, so if you like youth dew, if you like cinnabar, if you like opium, this is it. This is your fragrance, JHL. Uh, a stunner. Okay, next is going to be Fendi Uomo, one of my favorite, actually my favorite Italian leather, I will say. Spicy, leathery, grandma's leather kitchen open, you know, you open the cupboard to your grandma's spice kitchen that she's lived in the same house for 50 years, and, the, and she's had spices in that cupboard for 50 years, and here you go. You know, it opens up that way, but it dries leathery with castorium, cinnamon, cypress, patchouli, vetiver, cedar. It's so warm. It's so comforting. It's just beautiful. And then we're going to go to the house of Trussardi. And this is Trussardi Uomo. Same idea. Very similar fragrance, actually. Um, but there's a little bit more honey in here. It is very, very good. Um, and it feels like the time is maybe a little bit turned up a bit. Um, but it's about the leather, it's about the resins, and it's about the, the spices, the cinnamon, basil, marjoram. Fantastic. I love marjoram and perfume too, by the way. And then we stay in the same decade with Leonard Porom, one of my favorite le leathers from the 80s. Leather, castorium, carnation. There's a carrot note in here, a real carrot note with cinnamon, artemisia. It's green. Again, there's marjoram in the top. Beautiful. Okay. Next is one of my scent, the scent of the day from just the other day. This is YSL Jazz. Oh my God. This is so good. My favorite jazz. I could have included Jazz Prestige in this, but uh, it opens up. A lot greener than I remember it. Actually, the first five or ten minutes is very green. Lots of tarragon, basil, coriander, and then the spices come in. Cardamom, nutmeg, cinnamon. Beautiful. And it dries down to that late 80s DNA that I love so much. And then we've got a couple Frederick Malls. We've got Musk Ravageur, which you can put an asterisk next to the this one. If you can find the vintage matte cap, get it. I think it's more animalic and more interesting. The new one's more gourmand. It's more like smelling a cinnabar, you know, uh, not cinnabar, cinnabon. It's more like smelling a cinnabon, you know, I've been to the mall and smell that cinnabon. This has a little more oomph to it, you know, uh, in the base. And then geranium pour monsieur, which this is a summer fragrance for me. Uh, lots of peppermint, mint, and this also could have been on my synthetic list yesterday that I did yesterday because um, the top is anethol, which is a um, essential oil that is very close to or defines the scent of anise. There's florazone, which is an IFF ingredient, and it's said to have a clean and green scent reminiscent of a fresh ocean breeze. And there's Rod Roderol, which is a um, 
fragrance ingredient that resembles rose and galbanum and also has a waxy like and green aspect. Um, and then a cinnamon in the, in the heart. So, um, but fantastic for the summer. Great fragrance. And then, okay, get your pen out. This is 90s cinnamon again from 1991. This is Romeo Jiggly Per Uomo. Look at this stuff. I mean, and this is a Alberto Morias. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Um, resinous, spicy, woody. There's honey, which I love in a fragrance. And the, and the cinnamon is in the heart here. Uh, but it really stands out. It's got that 90s cinnamon. I don't know why that's a thing, but it is. It really uh, stands out to me. Okay, this is one I'm taking a privilege with. There's no cinnamon listed, but I think there's cinnamon in here. It smells like there's cinnamon in here. Roja's Creation E. Porom Parfum. Uh, with the gaudy cap. Ooh. Um, oh, I do love this stuff, though. In the winter, this is one of my favorite fragrances to wear. Because it has that tobacco and cognac that I love. And normally I don't like sweetness, but God, I love this fragrance. There's just some fragrances that this DNA is the easiest for me to overlook sweetness, you know? Um, heliotrope, cognac, tobacco, cardamom, and I think cinnamon. Um, that's why it's here. Okay. Two more. We've got, well, two more from the same brand. And then we've got even more. Uh, like I said, I hope you're buckled in. This is Basile Uomo. Um, I love this stuff. Spicy green, you know. Feels like you are... Feels like you're smelling an old school masculine 80s green fragrance. Um, there's citruses, there's basil, there's galbanum, there's clove, there's nutmeg, there's cinnamon, there's rose, there's blackcurrant, there's leather. Great old school masculine. And then, you know, if you like that amber fougere style, I'll tell you what, Basile Uomo Forte uh, is a flanker very few people talk about, but I really like it. It opens up uh, with some green notes, but it really quickly focuses on the resins. You know, uh, you get the ambers, um, you get the carnation, the cinnamon. The cinnamon is definitely amped up in this compared to the first one. This is much more oriental, warmer, patchouli and olibanum vanilla. Uh, and then, one of my favorite patchoulis of all time, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette from 1974. Uh, maybe my favorite patchouli, honestly. Uh, it's patchouli with castorium, leather, oak moss, and there's this honey and cinnamon thing in the top that's just stunning. Spicy, leathery. Oh, this is so good. I love this stuff. And if you can find the vintage with the wrap around, you know, uh, silver wrap around, that's that's what you want. Uh, very, very good. And then you want to put an asterisk next to this one too. Obsession for men. The vintage um, Calvin Klein cosmetics version. Apparently there was an eau de cologne first. Then an eau de toilette. I've never smelled the eau de cologne version of Calvin Klein Obsession for Men, but this is amazing. Amazing. Uh, I wear this, I've been wearing this to bed occasionally. I'm just waiting for the weather to cool off a bit because I want to wear this in the, because it's very powdery, you know? It's powdery and warm with that myrrh and rosewood, and there's a red berries note, nutmeg, sage, and cinnamon. Cinnamon is a big player in this. Uh, with the patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla. Okay, this is a fresher one I usually wear in the summer. This is Tiffany for men. But it has a little heft to it. You know, it, it also has a spicy powderiness. It opens up like Chanel's Pour Monsieur. Um, but it but it uh, doesn't have the civet of Ungaro Pour L'Homme 2. But uh, Ungaro Pour L'Homme 2 had has the depth of this, but with more civet. So I prefer Ungaro Pour Lome too, but this is a very classy scent, extremely. Uh, the patchouli, the cinnamon, tonka, vanilla, beautiful. And then one of my favorite honeys of all time, probably my favorite, um, Boss Number One. How can you, how can you say no to Boss Number One's honey? It's amazing. Honey, orris root, 
Oh, that pissy, animalic opening. Oh, it's so, God, I need to wear this soon. Um, tobacco in the dry down, and the cinnamon comes in the, in the dry down as well. Part of that cedar, tobacco, sandalwood, amber, cinnamon dry down. So good. Okay. Next, we've got uh, Marbert Man, which is another one of my favorite, back-to-back, -back, my favorite honeys. Um, this is a little bit fresher. It's got this aldehydic lavender top, uh, cinnamon in the heart next to the honey. And then we've got Salvador by Salvador uh, Dali. I talked about this recently. This is very close to Boss Spirit from the late 80s, but... Salvador Dali, Salvador by Salvador Dali is a Gerard Anthony. It made that video. You can go check that out. Check that perfumer's portfolio video out. But there's a cinnamon in the heart. And it feels like it's not as green and it's not as leathery. So, so, so Boss Spirit is extremely sharp green and then extremely leathery. Whereas this goes in a couple other directions. But it's very, very good. Sunshine in a bottle, as uh, Chris from Scentland would say. Cheers, mate. Okay. Next, uh, we have 1899 by the House of Histoise de Parfum. Now, 1899, uh, for those of you that don't know, 1899 is basically a niche version of Spice Bomb. It's vanilla and orange blossom, juniper, black pepper, iris, with lots of cinnamon, okay? And... Um, it's good, okay, but it's not full bottle worthy. This 15 mil is enough for me, but if you like Spice Bomb, check this one out. Okay, uh, next we have Pure Distance M, which it's a shame this is discontinued. One of my favorite leathers. In fact, I need to wear this soon. I love this stuff so much. I absolutely, I absolutely adore Pure Distance M. Oh, oh God, just smelling it from the atomizer is like heaven. Uh, leather with cystus labdanum, oak moss, cinnamon, vetiver, patchouli. So good. So, so good. If you like Bellamy, check that one out. And then we've got an ostrich box. An ostrich box, me lord. Ostrich box. M, uh, C. No, this is M. You're C. Uh, this is C by Clive Christian. Tuscan leather clone with oud is what they say but there is a warm cinnamony combo in the heart that mixes with the saffron raspberry cardamom orris root beautiful if you like tuscan leather you'll like c for men trust me and then we have what do we have next uh we have um we have Catalyst by the House of Halston. So Catalyst is very underrated. Not many people talk about this fragrance. I'm going to do a full review on this, but it's very complex. There's a million notes. It looks like a Roja Dove. You know, there's so many notes. Um, it's green, it's floral, it's fruity, it's leathery, it's spicy. There's nutmeg and cinnamon in the heart, but the cinnamon plays a big part. I think it's it, it plays a big part of, of Catalyst. And even going back to its um even going back to its young its uh older brother, Halston Z14, you could easily make a case that this is one of the best cinnamon scents. So spicy, so leathery. Uh I love the cinnamon in here. Uh, mixed with the cypress, it makes it so unique. And then we've got a new comer to the list. And the newcomer to the list is an MCM fragrance, and it's called Success. Now, MCM Success. Oh, okay. So this is another one I'm taking liberty with. Because it shows honey, orange, rose, tobacco, lemon, iris, jasmine, carnation, patchouli, vetiver, cedar, amber, benzoin, honey again, leather, moss, musk, and vanilla. It smells like there's cinnamon in here. 
but I love this stuff. I wore this to bed. This is a total hit. Almost backup bottle worthy hit. That good. Okay. Um, next, we've got New York Intense from Nikolai. Uh, this is a spicy, citrusy, very professional. Lemon, lemon petit gras, you know, peppery, lavender. Uh, it has that Poor Monsieur, Bois du Portugal vibe, but it has this um, animalic dry down, which I really like. The dry down is, the, is my favorite part of that fragrance. Okay, now this is called Sorella Fontana If For Men. I've talked about this on my channel before. Uh, very under the radar scent. Green, it's like a Italian version of this, which is coming up next. Jaipur Om. If you know Jaipur Om, you know If For Men. Uh, if has uh, this Italian version of Jaipur Om. And it actually came first, believe it or not. Anique Bernardo did this. And, um, you know, this oriental, uh, sensual, it says woody, fresh opening followed by a spicy and softened by an intense woody signature. And that's a great description. It's um, Cinnamon plays a big part in both of these. But you can you could take out the marker and mark both of these down as big cinnamon scents. Okay, so one of my favorite cinnamon scents from the 90s that I'm taking liberty on because there's no cinnamon listed is Balenciaga Pour Homme. I think there's a huge cinnamon note in here. Again, not listed, but um, honey, benzoin, vanilla, um, lavender bergamot, coriander. I can't believe there's no cinnamon listed. It just blows my mind. I can smell it when I do this. I get the cinnamon. Um, but all-time mass, you know, one of the great all-time vintage masculines. Okay, next we've got Davidoff Amber Blend. This is cinnamon and nutmeg in the top. Amber rum absolute in the heart. Sandalwood peru balsam in the base. An amazing amber scent. I love this stuff. I think it's a great designer amber. One of the best designer ambers, actually. Many of the ambers that I really like are niche. By the way, I wore Grand Soir to bed the other night. And I know I've shit all over Grand Soir. But I actually enjoyed it for the first time ever. I enjoyed Grand Soir. What's happening to me? Um, but I'll talk, about, I'll talk about that soon. And maybe what's happening to me. I don't know what's going on. But uh, Sybaris is the next one. And there's a big cinnamon in the heart, lots of cumin in the opening, but it's a chifra. It's a spicy chifra. So cinnamon plays a big part here, but it dries down to this vintage, old school, leathery, ambery uh, chifra. And then uh, another one you can put an asterisk next to as far as cinnamon goes. This is so warm. It is a little synthetic, but it's beautiful. Potion. D squared potion. EDT. Or the EDP. They're both basically the same. Peppery, Angelica, oh, cinnamon, cashmeran, patchouli, very, very good. And then, last five, we've got uh, Arrogance Pour Homme. Okay, now Arrogance Pour Homme smells like you're smelling a blend of about 10 different vintage fragrances. It smells a little bit like Koros and in Givenchy Gentleman in the dry down. Um, it smells a little bit like denim in the top. Uh, the uh, cinnamon gives it this warmth. It's a beautiful. I mean, don't write this off because it's a cheapie. Arrogance Pour Homme from 82 is a great fragrance. Okay, another one to put a asterisk next to. This is Kenzo Jungle Pour Homme. One of the best cinnamon fragrances ever made, in my opinion. This is uh, spicy cinnamon with nutmeg, benzoin, Gaiac and cedar. I love this stuff. Huge fan. Uh, I do have a vintage bottle though. I think prior to uh, LVMH owning Kenzo. I don't know. I don't know the terms. I just know that this is an older bottle. So I've never smelled the new stuff, but this is very good. Uh, and then we've got Baptiste de Fa. Baptiste de Fa by uh, Serge Lutens. This is an insane spicy fragrance. Christopher Sheldrake was in the mental institution when he created this, but I like it. Uh, it's candied orange with clove, gingerbread, okay, and cinnamon. Uh, and it smells like you're smelling this wine 
Like, look at the color of the juice. Like a red wine, it has that feeling to it. But, you know, I like it, although it also smells like you're taking an iron and burning your clothes. Um, has this metallic burnt thing going on with the candied orange. Very strange scent. That's why I say I think Christopher Sheldrake was in the mental institution. Okay, these last two are all-time great cinnamon scents to me. Uh, this is like cinnamon woody, and then the final one is like cinnamon. I mean, the best cinnamon I've ever smelled. Uh, this is Feminita Dubois by Serge Luton's. Woody, spicy, honey, beeswax, clove, cinnamon, cedar, plum, basically, with vanilla. Beautiful fragrance. Uh, Christopher Sheldrake and Pierre Bourdon, two master perfumers, two of the best. And finally, you, this one, you can put a gigantic asterisk next to it. You can circle it. You can check mark it. This is the cinnamon. I've never smelled a better out and out cinnamon fragrance. It's called Roos by the House of Serge Luton's. This is fantastic. This is amazing. Oh, just smelling it from the atomizer. It, it's one of the best cinnamons I've ever smelled. It's cinnamon with amber mandarin orange nutmeg and cedar wood it's spicy it's woody but it just captures cinnamon you know it's the perfect representation of cinnamon now this is an older bottle you can see it's a palais royale bottle of serge luton's but um man it's is really really good stuff and so that concludes it an hour 16 minutes in Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. Um, so, appreciate you watching. I know these long videos are time-consuming. I enjoy doing them. Uh, and let me know what some of your favorites are. Let me know if there are favorite. Try to stump me. Tell me some cinnamon fragrances I don't talk about. I'd love to learn about some cinnamon fragrances you guys love or spicy, warm fragrances you guys love since winter is going to be coming up soon, fall is going to be coming up soon. Um, so I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you to everyone who does the like, subscription, comment, you know, all that stuff that I always say thank you for. It is very much appreciated. I know you have a choice. I know you don't have to do that. Um, so thanks for watching everybody. Cheers guys. See you again tomorrow with another video. Bye now.